It's been uh, quite the adventure. Yeah. Over the past couple of uh, months. Uh, uh, of course, I had quadruple bypass surgery. Quads. Wow. Not one, not two, not three. All four. I fucking plugged up all four of those babies. <laughs> and you got to watch it happen uh, with Gino drinking whiskey, uh, eating like shit, all the good things you saw right here. 15 beers a day, all the fun and excitement that will uh, make your uh, uh, coronary arteries like a, a paper straw trying to suck up a milkshake. <laughs> it just, yeah, it really isn't a, a healthy lifestyle. Uh, I think a lot of people too might have noticed uh, the the last uh, the previous couple of months before uh, I had this done. Uh, I was I was very tired. I was like sitting here and. I could not get my energy up, and I was just, uh, I was taking a lot of days off. Not like I haven't, uh, but I have an excuse at least this time. But it just was, uh, you know, a lot of partying and a lot of uh, partying with a, a, a weak uh, ticker. Yeah. It's not good. Well, it's genetics too, right? Like your yeah, dad was yeah. dead by this time. Uh, my dad died at eight years old from uh, coronary <laughs> artery disease. He was eight years old. Wow. Amazing. Uh, oh, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, my father's side of the family, holy shit. I don't remember one of the uncles or cousins or they, they all just fucking dropped dead uh, from uh, heart shit. Back then they called it hardening of the arteries. Right. You have hardening of the arteries, and there was really nothing you could do about it. So they just smoked and drank more, and uh, that was about that. So I talked to your doctor at the hospital. You did. In front of you. I know. It was very funny. And, uh, he said, because people kept asking me exactly what, what you do, and I'm like, from my understanding from what I got from the doctor was they just rip out a bunch of veins that are extra veins in your arm yeah. and stick them in your chest. Yeah, yeah. So we have extra veins floating around? I know. That was weird when I heard that. I'm like, why would why they put in extras? <laughs> There's a like spare? Spares. <laughs> they take it from the arm, the leg. Look at me. I got my jacket fuzz all over my nice black 511 shirt. Uh, yeah, they take it from your leg. They took one from the leg. They took one from my arm. And they take one from, like, the inside of your abdomen. Okay. I don't know. I don't so know. They need why. four big veins. They need four. Yeah. Well, they need enough to to make up for four. And there, it's it's not really that big. You think like when when you hear about it, you think it's like a piece of fucking macaroni oh, or yeah. rigatoni or something. Yeah. It's not. It's like small fucking veins, and they they you know they're relatively small. But in the pictures, it looks like a penne pasta. It looks like four. Yeah, pennies. it's not really. Huh. Not the ones they replace. The ones they replace are the ones that are kind of grabbing around the heart. Oh, right. You know? right, right. It's like that. It's not the aorta or the uh, superior or inferior vena cava. Oh, wow. Uh, it is the, uh, you know, the, the little ones. But they're very important because they're the only things that feed the heart. The heart feeds the whole body. And then it's like, hey, I need a little, little something for myself, a little something for my head. You know, <laughs> so I was asking about this earlier. Everyone I talk to says it's it sucks to recover, but once you recovered, it's a new engine in a car, and you yeah just, new energy you never had. Yeah, yeah, because it it got to the point where uh, you know if your heart's not pumping the way it's supposed to, uh, you're tired all the time, uh, very sweaty. <laughs> I was very sweaty all the time, and uh, weak, just didn't have any energy. Slept slept a lot. And, uh, you know, for some reason, you just attribute it to everything else. Ah, oh, maybe I got to uh, have uh, 12 beers today instead of 15 <laughs> or only uh, five shots of Jack with Gino instead of uh, eight. But, uh, yeah, because, you, you know, you're trying to just you don't want to really face the uh, the fact that you might need a pretty complicated procedure. Right. So you just kind of go, oh, it must be this or it must be that. And then, you know, 
when your heart's beating a mile a minute and uh, the rhythm doesn't feel right or anything, I was like, oh, shit, I better get to the hospital. Oh, so that you, so you're, you're hanging around and yeah. you feel this sort of palpitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was uh, very accelerated. It wasn't painful. It wasn't like a heart attack or anything. It was just a, um, you know, the heart going, hey, we need something. <laughs> You're not paying attention to me. So it starts beating furiously, and you yeah. go, this is a big deal. I got to call 911. Yeah, yeah. They get an ambulance, yep. take you to the hospital, and they go, yeah, the this hospital. is bad. And then they uh, did a, an angiogram where they snake something up your wrist. Ah. I don't know how they, like, how do they navigate all yeah. the veins and art and, and they snake it up and they go into your coronary arteries. What? And, and they, ha, like, how do you know? And how does yeah. it turn? What are they using to like turn it? It's, it's got like internal. Hey, look, uh, look at my dick. Muscles. <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, they, how do I prepare? Well, you, you just show up. Yeah, oops. See, that don't look good. That, and then they, they shove something up there, and then they take a look. Uh, and they, they, uh, they can tell if it's all clogged. So that must be yours there. Uh, it sounds yeah. like, though, they go, okay, I can't unclog this. I'm just going to cut away this section. Give up. They don't even cut it. They just they leave it there. And then they tap into the base of the aorta which is the main artery coming out of the heart. And then they connect it below the clog. Oh. And they reconnect it to that and... They it, open up a hole and sew it onto yeah. the hole. I don't know how they do that. With like angel hair pasta. And they just give up on that. But so blood just knows not to go there anymore. It's a new... It's well, it could go up to the clog and then... It bypasses, and then it could go up to the clog that way if there's any branches. It's oh, being so totally... you still have your shitty heart, but there's another one on top of it. <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, you have your plumbing in your house, and yeah. that's fine. But the main line to your house gets clogged up. Yeah. So they put another pipe there, and it pumps it to your house. Right. Well, but my house plumbing was fine. But the, the main line coming in. I just, yeah, because in plumbing, fine. you would just cut that area out and put in a new Right, plumbing. right. But they just bypass it. Well, it's extra. You're, yeah. You're probably getting like a good 2% out of the old shitty route. Yeah, yeah. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It was crazy. Uh, it, it, like, I got the angio, and that was pretty cool because you just kind of, they give you good drugs, and you're like, oh... Uh, and they lay you down, you're in the OR, and they snake it up there, and you're kind of asleep. And then when I woke up, I'm still laying there, and there's a big fucking huge television. This hospital's in fucking sane uh, with their equipment yeah. and, and the staff and everything. It was fucking phenomenal. And uh, so the doctor's talking to me, and he's like, so here's the results. And I'm just laying there looking, and, he, and I saw like it just flattened out. There's these arteries that are supposed to carry blood were not doing the, the job. So I go, okay. And I, I assumed that if there was a problem, they just put more stents in. Right. Stent a little uh, wire kind of a spring yeah, looking. Just showed thing. it there. Yeah. yeah. And it opens up the, um, the artery from, from the clog. And uh, they go, yeah, this is past stent. Can't even put a stent in there. I'm like, okay, then what? He goes, well, you need bypass surgery. I'm like, oh, Christ. But I'm just laying there like, all right. And you're also high, so you don't- Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. They keep you <laughs> drugged up pretty good. But I was also like, you know, previously, if you think about these things, they're horrifying. Like the idea of, of having your chest sawed open. Right, they take your sternum out. It, no, no. Oh, they don't. They just split it. Oh. They go weep with a saw, and then they take these spreaders and go, and that's how you know you got like uh, cartilage between your front and back ribs, and they move pretty good for breathing and for prying apart. <laughs> but uh, I was kind of like, uh, yeah, what? Well, then what? And they say that, and and you know, 
I've I've heard about bypass surgery and everything and thought, oh my God, I could never do that. But if you're given no choice, you're what I always say on the roller coaster. Right. They put you on that and tick, 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 and then you're just like, Yeah, I'm I'm along for the ride right, until right. hopefully they spit me out at the end. And I get to leave and enjoy the amusement park a little longer. Yeah, what are you going to do, say no? Yeah, yeah there's yeah, no like saying no. Opinion. There's no second opinion. <laughs> I see it right there. Right. What, is some guy going to fucking take sage and incense <laughs> and fucking give me coffee enemas? Yeah. Uh, that didn't work, by the way. Right. I tried it. No, they, uh, so you just had to go, you got to go through it. So they had to get all of, before they operate, they don't drag you right in. They want everything stabilized, so all your blood chemistry has to be in these green zones. So they're constantly giving you magnesium and uh, uh, what, what's in bananas? But potassium. Potassium. Thank you. They want your blood cell count right. Uh, all the things that your body is, your your liver enzymes and kidney functions, everything has to be within the green so there's less risk during the surgery. Well, they're big on uh, maintaining their reputation as number one in... in oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't want any foul-ups. Right. So uh, they, they, they spent a few days doing that, and my surgeon had to go somewhere else for some surgery. Like, he doesn't just do it there. He's like a star. Yeah, he did a conference. Yeah, yeah, there. he does a conference. He did, he did a heart transplant while I was, you know, in pain in my room. <laughs> I was I I was great in my room, uh, and then when everything was good, they they did the uh, the procedure, uh, and that's kind of odd too, because you know you got family and everything, and you're like, hey, <laughs> in case I don't see you, take it easy. Wow. And the fucking weird thing is, you just wouldn't even know it, because yeah. once they put you under, and then it was an eight hour operation. For them, for me, it was literally two seconds. Amazing. I, I, the second I was out, I opened my eyes and I was back in my room. I wasn't even in recovery. I was back in my room going like, whoa. Did I live? Yeah. <laughs> Is this heaven? I don't know. <laughs> it, uh, if it was heaven, Bill Schultz would have shown up. <laughs> Show up. No, it, so... uh yeah, that that the drugs are amazing. I can tell why people love doing drugs. Well, were you worried about getting addicted? Nah, were, I. Were you taking oxy or morphine or? Uh, at first, it was Dilaudid. Oh, that's that was cool. the one they put on the button, and it's like, well, if you feel pain, hit hit the button, and uh, you know you can't just hit it like this because it's every eight minutes you can hit it again. And I became a clock watcher. <laughs> I, I was sitting there. I'd hit it once, and then I'd just be looking at the clock. It's like, this is the slowest fucking eight minutes. Cause, and it wasn't even really for the pain. I'm sure it helped with the pain. But I just loved the buzz. It was so weird. I was having audio hallucinations and even some visual ones where everything in your peripherals was something like a person that mic if i was looking this way your microphone would be like a thing kind of moving a little bit Ooh. until i looked at it and really said okay that's a microphone and then laying back looking at the television i could see like the foot of the bed and my feet under the blanket and everything and looking at the tv didn't feel like that it felt like i was standing up looking down from like the foot of the bed was a ledge and i was looking into what looked like a pool that was the television oh weird it was completely 90 degrees the wrong way and i'm like i got need more <laughs> more of this wonderfulness so the tv had this insane depth yes you could almost look down in there and, and it was this way it was uh, it, the tv oh, was I my see. floor i gotcha and i, I gotcha. was the wall crazy wow i know and then they put me on the Oxy after that. And I was taking those for a little while. And those were pretty good. I was always going like, is there a, is it time yet for the Oxy? Would you please? Were you in pain? What was the pain? I guess I was. Well, when they cut down the middle here and spread it open, 
it and then wire your ribs back together with some kind of titanium wire and then sew the skin up yeah there's some could you it's just, when you bruise your ribs or break your ribs you can't sneeze or cough oh god yeah so the sneezing sneezing and coughing. thing coughing sometimes they'd be like uh can you cough and stuff give us give us a cough and i'd be <laughs> <laughs> they give you this heart-shaped pillow to like push against your chest when you cough right or and god forbid a sneeze if i felt a sneeze coming up i would grab the nostril and pinch the inside and bite my tongue and just not breathe and wait until the sensation went away because the idea of sneezing i didn't sneeze for two weeks Holy shit. i was able to keep it for two weeks, and then the first time i did it still fucking hurt um and what about laughing yeah it wasn't much to laugh at <laughs> I wasn't on the air. I wasn't watching the show. Right. So there was well, I shouldn't have sent you so many hilarious texts. Nothing to laugh. I love your texts. Yeah, that should have made them less Get funny. Me through. I wasn't thinking. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the pain of laughing. <laughs> the one of the okay, a couple of bad things it were the the chest tubes, and I don't know what this is. It's like chest abdomen tube. Oh, it's a draining. It's a draining. It wasn't thing. really a drain. It's like a vent or something. I don't even know. It, it was. It was because it wasn't going into a bag or anything like a drain. It was just to to vent the the uh, abdomen and the. So it's just a tube that's stick pointing under the air. They're short. And they're like that. Oh. Just and they're you know thin, but they're there for some fuck reason. When they take those out. Oof. They literally just pull them out of you. I'm in the bed in the room, and it's not like in an OR. They don't drug. Well, I had the drugs, um, but then they go like, "Okay, take two deep breaths, and on the last one, just go. Mm, you go like mm, real loud and hard, and push, and then they pull it out. I swear, it felt like these things inside me were whipping." my organs while they were coming out well, they were i guess they i guess they were by. yeah 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 uh, it was it was so fucking painful and then the other thing i didn't like at all was early on uh where they wire your your sternum together uh if i moved a certain way i i could feel it going oh the wire scraping no the the two halves of the sternum oh like grinding together a little before they fused back Oh my together. god! So you'd move like this, and I feel like that was just creepy, not necessarily very creepy. There was a lot of creepy shit. I had like a a IV thing and a tube in my neck that they used to 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 uh, pump the blood through or some shit. Can we see ribs? I can't IV. picture a sternum right now. An IV. Who who sternum, Robin? <laughs> Howard sternum. <laughs> Uh, two things in your neck and then those two yeah tubes. yeah and the t the one like it was an IV type needle and I don't like when those move around and especially in the neck I was oh, getting the heebie-jeebies no offense Jewish people I was getting the heebie-jeebies <laughs> I was getting the fucking yeah uh, when I went to visit you it looked like something out of an H.R. Giger drawing oh yeah 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 like the tubes were just I had a lot of things of there you Thank go you. okay so the sternum, sternum is the middle one yeah, yeah. Uh, I get it. Those got to be wired. delicious. Those got to be wired together. Yeah, you got to wow. wire. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> there you go. That's the sternum. So the green and the red thing, that the green and the blue uh, are just the same as all the other bones. They don't go up to the collarbone. How? So this guy is not really How connected. How far up is that? That's there. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if they do that. See, it's it's actually not too bad either. It's like, oh, but I thought it was gonna be a big fucking crazy thick scar. It's not too bad. But wait, you said they don't remove the sternum, and they it looks like they do. What do you mean? Well, they what do you mean. What do you mean? They saw out that mid the and when it was colored there, they saw colored. out the green thing. They saw out the top. No, the, they saw out the green thing. No. Uh, <laughs> No, they just split it. They saw it down the middle just of it. The blue part. They they and then they spread it. They saw through the center of the blue. Yeah. 
Oh. Yeah, they saw through that, and then they spread it. Cause I thought they like, removed the green and the blue. There's completely. well, there's no see the green, the blue, and the purple and the white ribs. Uh, they're not really well. They, they are the ribs, but they're not really connected. They got like little 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 breakaways, snap tools. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they they saw through that, and then they they pry it open. Blech. Remember when we were talking to that guy? I, I don't know if you already knew this, but it felt so cool to be talking to the surgeon because it's a, such an alpha thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I find out he's the head nurse, and I, I was just like, oh. Oh, now I don't want to talk to you. Meanwhile, he knows everything. <laughs> it was so funny, though. You looked around the room, and you just went like, this doesn't seem very hard. <laughs> like you told the guy it open heart surgery <laughs> Didn't seem very hard. He goes, no, it seems like you got your stuff here that you need. And yeah. it's just sewing veins together. And the doctor's laughing. Oh, the nurse. Uh, the, the, he's like the head guy. He's the right-hand man of the surgeon. So he's not a nurse. No, he's not like a nurse. Right, he's right. the right-hand man of the surgeon. And then you started asking him, do you guys do sex change operations here? <laughs> The guy was laughing. He found you very entertaining. Well, he said that it, it he was his wife wanted him to. Yeah, it's so lucrative, right? I bet. Like, that's not what I signed cutting, up for. I'm not doing cutting that. Uh, preteens tits off for uh, right. Get some cash out. At least of that one. downside is the nightmares. Right, right, right. The nightmares and maybe lawsuits. <laughs> yeah. in, uh years to come and the caterwauling of regret on your yeah. deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, so once they got done, I knew it was going to be a, a, a long recovery period. Everything got me winded, like just moving. And then they, by the way, right after the surgery, you go back to your room. Within hours, they want you up walking. Right. And I was like, I couldn't believe that. I was so fucking weak. And winded at everything, and the amount of fucking tubes and yeah, there was shit. a whole wall of shit, a whole that thing, was and they in. put some on a roller, and then they had like they had another thing that they put in there temporarily called an impella system, and this was uh, to help the heart out after the surgery, kind of a little backup pump. Oh right, so the heart doesn't have to work as hard. Invented by an Israeli. Uh, yes, yes, an Israeli invented that. Not one of those fucking Hezbollah or fucking... <laughs> no towel heads were hummus. responsible for this invention. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they put that in temporarily to, to help the heart heal and didn't have to work as hard. And that's a whole thing. It's a little machine on another rolly thing. And then there's the IV thing, which is also other monitoring equipment. And, you know, to get up and walk, it took three people to go with me to roll the shit around. And I couldn't walk from my room to the next room down the hall the first time. I walked up there and I was like, uh, and they have like a chair, you sit down and they roll you back in the room. That was as far as I could walk. I felt like I was gonna fall down. And then as time goes by, you're like, okay, I'm doing a lap around the floor slowly. And then you do a couple of them and you know, get home and you walk more. They just want you uh, walking. What about when you're staying at your brother's? Were you disciplining yourself to go and walk? Yeah, yeah. He's in a nice uh, kind of a condo complex uh, that has a road that is not open to traffic. And uh, each one, I think he said, each one was, each lap was a, a third of a mile or something like that. Huh. So I would do a mile. And then uh, I started doing like six lap so it's two miles and uh yeah at first again once i first got there he has one of those man-made condo lakes out back it's not big or anything and i couldn't even walk around that i was like oh my god i can't fucking and then you just get better you know your body starts healing you eat you fucking drink and you you wake up and hope you feel a little better than the day before uh yeah stairs now I, I at first stairs were just like oh no stairs, oh god. Now it's like I do the normal little jog up the stairs. Well, so you're in way better shape now than you were a year ago. I think I think I'm probably 
<clears throat> at least the way uh, I feel uh, as far as being winded goes, yeah. Yeah, and I'll still get better. You I lost just... 20 pounds of water weight because your heart works. Yeah, yeah. I did an MRI yesterday. They had uh, me in the MRI machine uh, to look at the heart and see the heart function. And uh, it went up 10% from when I went into the hospital. So they go, hey, you're in the right direction. You know, keep <clears throat> keep working out and walking or whatever. Those MRI machines are fucking, they tell you, uh, hey, if you need any uh, kind of tranquilizer, let us know and have someone there to pick you up. And, and I'm like, why the fuck would you need a tranquilizer? And I'm one to take fucking anything they want to give me. Uh, and I didn't realize. And then they put you in that tube and I started realizing, okay, I could see why they would. Yeah. I, if there's a fire. Oh. It's in a horror movie. I saw it in a trailer. Oh. There's a monster that comes crawling up. My God. He's in there. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Oof. Yeah. So I was just sitting there and uh, yeah, they make you breathe in and breathe out and all that shit on cue. But the tube looks like you look at it and go, oh, okay, you can shove me in there. And then you don't realize like the backboard thing you're on slides in. The top of that tube is this close to your face. No, thank you. I'm like, ooh, that's, I'm, I feel like one of those guys splunking that got caught upside oh, down. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that, that video. Dave, yeah, 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 fuck that. So that was uh, interesting. And the things just make, you're in there, this close, all claustrophobic. I had an itch on my nose. I couldn't bring my hand up to scratch my nose. Yeah, there you go. Holy mackerel. And then they make, like, Eh, 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 noises. Yeah. Loud. They're fucking loud noises. Like, I don't know what this is doing. And then there's something in there spinning around at like a thousand RPM inside that ring. You ever see, show an MRI without the cover on it. It, the thought that you're in something that close, just because it's covered with some fucking plastic, you feel safe? It's it's heavy machinery spinning at an unbelievable speed. Look at this. And we're in the competence crisis, so it just takes one affirmative action hire yeah. to have not screwed something. Oh, yeah, not screwed something in there. At least it would probably go out. And kill them? <laughs> yeah, kill them. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Yeah, look how fast that thing is spinning. Is that mental? Who so it's just of taking a billion oh. pictures. So I've been recovering uh, over my brother's house. He's out in like Port Jeff and it's a million miles away. There is nothing going on out there. He's not even close enough to Port Jeff Village. Like early on, uh, Vinny FBI came out and we went to lunch in Port Jeff Village. And that's nice. A lot of restaurants right by where the ferry comes in to go to Connecticut. And, uh, but his house is like, there's nothing. It's like very commercial. Okay. Mall of, of strip malls and gas stations and stuff. So there's nothing really to do. So I play a lot of video games. I wear my glasses, these cheap glasses up high. And I literally have like a zit and a rash on the top. Now I got to wear them like Chuck Schumer. <laughs> but would you would you fit enough to go to bars and strip clubs and shit if you could? No, no. Early on, also, I went to a party at Vinny's house, and it's everyone's there and they're drinking and singing karaoke and shit. And while it was nice to see people, I was just kind of like, I don't know what to do here. I right. can't. I can't really do anything. Uh, and, and I just wasn't feeling really good at that point. I was still getting exhausted. You know, it was fucking weird for a while. Pissing exhausted me. Like I would, I'd have to like put my arm against the wall and piss and go like, <sighs> I don't know what it is about the muscle, whatever Too muscles you're using. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to sit to pee, even with the. <laughs> <laughs> the exhaustion and then that went away which i was like oh good i'm feeling better about that so you just start feeling better and uh wanting to go out and see people thanksgiving was great i went over uh and fran and uncle tony's great and uh had a great time with the family 
had a couple of glasses of wine, and uh, it was very cool. It was very uh, good to see everybody. Matthew, what's up, Matthew? Hello. Hello, Anthony. Yes, what's up, my We're friend? We're so happy to have you back here. It is great to be back. We're so happy to have you back. We thought you were going to die, but you're here. Eh, well. You're with us again. Sorry. Fantastic. I've got a lot of shit. There's three things that, that I could say. There's, uh, first of all, how much did it cost for all that stuff? Oof. Uh, the operations thank, and everything. Was it thank expensive? Thank God I have. In, in England, we have the NHS. It's free. Yeah, fuck that noise. Free. It's worth every penny, too, Free. I bet. Uh, I've had, exactly, I since I was gainfully employed as a radio personality for many years, I have always, through the great uh, Barry, who was our uh, accountant and kind of finance guy, I've always had top-tier medical insurance. And what does early it cost on, you a month? It's a lot of fucking money. A month. I can't remember what it is, but it's more than I've heard anyone pay. Like three grand? Mm, yeah. 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 It's crazy expensive. But, you know, you, like I said, you get, handy. What, you get what you pay for. Uh, I don't want some shitty doctor. I don't want a shitty place. I don't want, and then I don't want to have to still pay a bunch of money because uh, your deductible is crazy. And um, so, yeah, I couldn't imagine what all this costs. Do you have any idea? I was thinking like half a million dollars. Yeah, that sounds right. I mean, your room was like a nice hotel room. It was a hotel room. I had electronic window shades that I could raise and lower from an iPad that was on a, a little arm that I could just go to and order the food I want, raise the, the blackout shades or the ones that diffuse the light a little the tv was an uh an 80 inch yeah it was uh, six feet wide yeah giant tv uh it it was better than hotel rooms that that i i've gotten and, and you uh, didn't get your food in a fucking box yeah yeah it wasn't some mexican <laughs> dropping off a, a bag of boxed food and the food wasn't even that bad like everyone thinks hospital food uh and the equipment, the staff, I can't fucking say enough. They, they were amazing. And yeah, I think once you go up that ivory tower to the top cardiac uh, ward where uh, the equipment is new, I think they renovated the place just a few years ago. And it is all the most modern equipment. And you start noticing like... Mostly white people. It's glaring. And the black people are there. They come in with the little broom and the thing, and they clean up. They take the garbage bags out. And then everyone else you see come in is white, Asian, Jewish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember when that black guy came into your room, and yeah. you didn't see the blue broom, and you said, you lost? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I help you? <laughs> But when my kids were born, all the nurses are remarkably obese black women yeah, yeah. in Crocs who are using the cart as a walking thing. They don't really need that mm -hmm. cart. Yeah. And then when I went to visit you, it was just like, not conda. <laughs> not conda. It was, right? It was beautiful. There was one Asian that was mostly white. It was incredibly fit, too. Yeah, yeah. Not one yeah. fat nurse. They, uh, they, they would have a... a, a two-person team during the day and a new two-person team at night and it was usually white or asian girls and they would take care of everything you all right you need anything we're gonna do this we're gonna change this bag for fucking potassium we're gonna uh feed you yeah they just wait on you hand and foot they're uh that langone system they got there this guy, uh, Langone, is incredibly rich, and he, he opens up these hospitals, and NYU, uh, they, he looks at the students and sees ones with potential, that he wants to work in, in the hospitals when uh, they graduate, and he pays for their education. Yeah, amazing. They're hand-picked, and then when they're educated, he hires them at, at the hospitals. So what does he just like check their scores or sit in the class and look to see who has their hand I think up? he just looks at the name on the sheet. 
Goldstein, you're in. You're in. Long, yeah, you're yeah, in. yeah. Jackson, you're out. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shanuli, Shaniqua. Yeah, they. Uh, it, it, it's fucking amazing. And uh, like I said, the equipment all brand new. Uh, so yeah, I I I felt like I was in pretty good hands at uh, that point. I had one fucking asshole in the whole thing one, one of these nurses and it was a dude Ugh. and he had like long hair in a man bun thing and it i just don't think he gave a fuck or didn't really know what he was doing he says to people that he's in the medical field he yeah yeah says the word nurse right 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 i work in medicine yeah and then uh the nyu like intern program and the uh the um it's it's a bunch of attractive young girls and they bring them over to help you walk and you know do things like that it's very uh i just nice. see your tits i yeah, I, yeah. I, i've been here for two weeks did you I help almost me died if I'm you not want to help you. i'm not gonna touch you you're fine <laughs> yeah if you want to help <laughs> this is how you can do it if you knew how much it would mean to me yeah just to see them you would just do it out of the goodness of your heart exactly that's how I felt. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, that and, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to come back in all sluggish and, you know, not feeling good. Uh, so that's why, you know, much to a lot of people's chagrin on social media, what the fuck, dude, who are you, Howard? I'm not paying for this. I want a yeah. rebate. You're taking days off, so many days off. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they fucking, like I said before, you want to see what they did to me? Watch the dinner scene from Alien. That's pretty much the, the, uh, what, what they uh, did. Yeah. So that's pretty much the story. We continue and, um, you know, I'm going down to South Carolina for, uh, for Christmas. Oh, cool. Go down there, hang out. You know, I'm cleared. Although I don't know how I get. Uh, cause I still got to wear this, this monitor thing and you've got a vest on. Yeah. It's the man's ear. It's the bro, Jerry. Yeah. It's like here and it's got, uh, sensors on it. Where are they? Yeah. Like here and here and then on the back and it's got these pads that, and it all fits in this vest thing, uh, that goes on and it monitors you. And if anything were to happen, it jolts you. <laughs> so it's a defibrillator. It's a defibrillator uh, monitoring vest. Yes. So it's not yes. like a doctor goes, that's not good. and pushes a button. No. It handles, it makes the decision. Right. And they tell, uh, they told me like, uh, make sure you just let everyone know to stay away from you if you just fall down. <laughs> oh, shit. Because you'll be electrical. I guess they'll be zapped. Holy but uh yeah it's uh it's interesting you got to change the batteries every 24 hours i got to keep it on even when i sleep because they want to you know monitor it and uh for three months so i've had it for a couple of months now if you fall just yell i'm live i'm live yeah that's the four from golf yeah oh oh okay yeah. Yeah. I'm live. Now we know not to touch uh, it. High voltage. <laughs> yeah, so uh so that and and you know, I, I don't know how I fly with the like with TSA the way it is. How do you walk through with TSA? That are at TSA? Yeah. Hi, I have a vest I have to wear. Uh, what? No, no, they no, no. no. You can't. That's look like a yeah, yeah, yeah. It's idiocracy. <laughs> Hello, Akbar. <laughs> yeah, it's wires and it's attached by a wire to a case. And you probably have to contact the airport in advance. Yeah, who? And tell them what. Just wait on hold. It's not for like I'm the six only hours. one with this shit. You know, it's fucking crazy. They're going to make you take it off, I bet. I, they, I would be like, no, I'm not. I'll sue you. <laughs> fall down <laughs> and i'll sue sue everyone yeah so i don't know how it works with security but whatever whatever make sure you're very clear about what kind of vest it is yes i'm wearing a vest that is for with electronics on it later zero explosives explosives 
I have explosive diarrhea and if I'm you, wearing a if vest. If you touch me and I'm live, you will get zapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't touch me or I'll set it off. I'll just grab the pilot and fucking hit it. <laughs> Take over the plane. No, I, I don't. Uh, I don't know. But I mean, they got to fucking uh, have some protocol for that. But they are all yeah. at TSA. So I don't know. I don't know. NHS versus U.S. Health. Uh, Stephen, what's up? You got your free health care, huh? Well, that's the thing. I have some medical stuff here. And, like, we, we moved here um, about two years ago. And, like, I had to go for an MRI. And then I had an EEG machine. And, like, they bring the shit to the house. And it's, like, almost instantaneous. You're waiting for months back home for that kind of shit. You know? Yeah. Yeah. People die waiting for their free health care, exactly. for yep. their free uh, fucking health care. Well, there's also a massive variety here in America. People think it's yeah. like you, you have to either pay cash or you can't, but there's things like Christian health ministries where everyone basically puts into a pot. Yeah, yeah. So you have, so you pay you pay at the wazoo for a visit if it's under a thousand dollars. Right. But if you have what you had, then we go we dip into the pot. If yeah, we go yeah. over a thousand. That's so how insurance like, works. Or emergencies. And the insurance companies hope that more people pay into it than take right. out of it. So you can have crazy high copays. Yeah. A thousand dollars. Right. Not a copay. Well, whatever. You handle it if it's under a thousand. Yeah, deductible. Deductible. Um and, and that they, takes care of just the incidentals. Right. You know, so they're not paying for everybody that goes in for a splinter or something like yeah. that. I know a guy who doesn't have any insurance. He's young, but he broke his hand really badly. Mm. He just paid cash for it. It was twelve grand, and he goes over the course of like five years. I'm way ahead. Uh huh. So. Yeah. Why not? I don't know. All right. Thank what's, you. What, sir. Wait. What's your insurance, yeah. Scottish man? Uh, Florida blue. And how much is it a month? Blue. Uh, I don't know. The wife pays that. How <laughs> uh, the wife does? You let your wife pay your fucking bills. She's fucking loaded. <laughs> You're oh. a kept man. She's the one with the money. Uh, no, she's a wrestler. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, the new. Yeah, okay. All right. She does what? Breast work? I don't know. I, that accent is a, is a bitch. Are you going to go and say you can't understand this? Because when he's mucking about, he's talking about insurance and his wife's going to pay his bills in on that. Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. Oh. Mm. Yeah, the no drinking thing is a little weird. When did you last have a drink? I've had a glass of wine uh, over Aunt Fran and Uncle Tony's for Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's not drinking. No, it's not. Drinking is when you wake up with your pants on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have no well, idea. Well, I haven't. I haven't in months. Wow. Yeah. That part's like, ah, fuck, you know. Eh, you like, I'd like uh, tipping a few. And again, in social settings where everyone's drinking... It's a little bit of a drag. Right, because their IQs go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're there like an aristocrat. Oh, you're yeah. Like Oscar Wilde. Yeah. <laughs> with that serviette in your hand. Well, and they're all like, I thought I was going to fart, but then I shit. That's like twice this month. And you're like, ew. So you've defecated. Yeah, yeah. Some of the, because uh, I've had some conversations with drunk people. Uh, and I know when I'm drinking, these are the greatest conversations in the world. <laughs> yes, yes. And I am into it. I am able to retort. And and when you're not drinking, you're just like, oh, shut the fuck You, you already up. said that. You're talking in a yeah, fucking yeah. loop. Stop. Ugh. That's meaningless drivel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last drunk guy I spoke to, he goes, so he's from Queens. He's like, yeah, so I took up boxing, you know, and, uh, you know, I said, the, the guy was pretty impressed. Like, he said, hey, you serious? You never boxed before? And I go, I go, I didn't say I never fought before. I <laughs> uh, yeah. told that story three times oh. in a fucking row I until don't. I was saying the ending mm -hmm. with him. Instead of never box before, I said never fight before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as I said, as I said. Oh, <sighs> how fucking annoying. Yeah, but when you're drinking, people it's are fucking. Well, we brilliant. always talk when we're drunk at the bar after the show. Yeah. We're always like, we're wasting gold, Jerry. Always. Maybe we're not. Now I'm gonna Maybe be. It's I'll shit. be sitting there like, oh, <laughs> not too funny. It's not know. gold. This is bronze. This isn't at interesting best. at all. I. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This yeah. is aluminum foil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now I don't know, because I, uh, to go to Port Jeff, 
and take the train in every day. The train from Port Jeff to the city is over two hours. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, but the drive is three. Like, you're not fucking so is getting it, from Port Jeff. It, it, takes, it takes 25 minutes just to get from his house to the expressway. And you're still fucking in the asshole of paradise, Eastern Long Island. Is it above Montauk? No, it's it's around Stony Brook. Okay. It's just a little further east than Stony Brook. So I don't know. We're at an impasse here. Yeah. So I don't want to do the hotel thing again. I think that contributed <laughs> uh, to a large part of the problem. Just hanging out in hotels, doing nothing and drinking. Oops. I did. You can Airbnb for like a month at a time. Yeah. Uh, not really close. Hmm. Like maybe if I get something around where I used to live, I could take the train. Because the train from Mineola is fucking great. I don't care. 40 minutes. That's fine. That's a normal. That's civilized. Yeah. Route from the suburbs to the city. Uh, but yeah, the idea of hours. Nah. I had an appointment uh, in in the city that lasted, I don't know, 15 minutes. It took eight hours for everything, like getting to, and I took the train for Port Jeff. I got to Penn, and then I have to go to cross town in an Uber or a cab, and that takes forever. You know, we're like the Californians now, but we're yeah. the New Yorkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so fucked up. So I don't know how I'm going to swing this, this whole coming in thing. Uh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. 